our old press is no longer coping with many things. 100 tons is not always enough. Under any of the videos, you can find numerous comments from subscribers asking for a new press. 200 tons. So I decided if we're getting a new press, it shouldn't be 200 tons, but at least 500. In fact, this idea got into my head a year ago. So 500 ton press, what does it look like and where to get it? Of course, the simplest way is to buy it. From time to time, 500 ton presses from Soviet times appear for sale. They look something like this. They weigh around 15 tons and are about 5 meters tall. The ceiling height of my workshop is 2.5 meters. And usually all this 50-year-old equipment is in terrible condition and restoring it is no easy task since the parts weigh more than a few kilograms. But not only Soviet junk is available for sale, but also new equipment. For example, here's a more compact Chinese 500-ton press. Its mass is less than 8 tons, but there is one small detail. It costs almost $80,000. 80K is a pretty significant price for anyone, I believe. Of course, unless you have a palace somewhere in Hollywood. And besides, 80K is the price of a Chinese press. An American or German press costs around $200,000. And I decided to go the hardest, but more budget-friendly way. It's time to use my engineering skills and design the press myself. The main part of the press, its muscles, is the power hydraulic cylinder. First of all, it was necessary to figure out its parameters and then, based on its characteristics, design the frame. It took more than three months to thoroughly think through and calculate the entire structure. After all, it's 500 tons. It's more complicated than assembling a press in a garage from a 5-ton jack. To make the press as light and compact as possible, it was necessary to make the hydraulic cylinder compact as well. But in turn, despite its relatively small size, it should develop an enormous force of 500 tons. Therefore, the pressure in the hydraulic system must be enormous. A small private company that specializes in repairing and restoring hydraulic cylinders took on the task of manufacturing the hydraulic cylinder. The production of the hydraulic cylinder took four months, with half of the time spent waiting for the components. For example, a large diameter chrome rod was custom ordered from Italy. The cold rolled hone tube, which serves as the cylinder sleeve, was also ordered from Italy. This tube has a wall thickness of 5 cm and can withstand pressures over 1,000 atmospheres. One meter of this tube costs 2,000 euros. While the hydraulic cylinder was being manufactured, I was busy sourcing the other components. If the power hydraulic cylinder is the muscles of the press, then its heart is the pump station. The main element of this pump station is a two-stage axial piston pump. The first stage develops a pressure of 200 atmospheres and the second stage 700. To hold muscles with a force of 500 tons, a strong skeleton is needed. The frame of the press. It will be made from thick steel plates cut to size by a plasma cutter. I managed to order the metal for all the components of the press at the end of winter. But with the plates, I got caught in the steel price hike. Everyone who works with metal knows that steel prices significantly increased in early spring. The difference in cost for just these plates before and after the price hike was about $1,000. No matter how precisely plasma cuts, it still leaves slightly melted edges. How can one avoid grinding? The plates will be stacked like a sandwich and it's essential to achieve the closest possible fit between surfaces.
This is what the newly manufactured 500-ton power hydraulic cylinder looks like. Before its installation, it's necessary to remove all these temporary fixtures and give it a good finish. The hydraulic cylinder is bolted to the edges with these small bolts, each requiring a size 50 wrench. Each of these bolts weighs 5 kilograms. You can even use them to work out your biceps. Using a grinder, I gave the cylinder a finished look. Of course, it will be additionally painted after assembly. And this is what the uprights, which will work under tension, look like. These nuts are screwed onto them. Each nut weighs 10 kilograms and each upright weighs 130 kilograms. By the way, I assembled the entire press by myself. The weight of the lower plates, along with the four stands, is one and a half tons. To set and tighten the lower nuts, I needed a car jack. Fortunately, it could still handle that weight. The most challenging element of the assembly was installing the hydraulic cylinder. It weighs almost a ton. It was lifted using a three-ton winch. And there was a risk that the ceiling beams might not hold. Coincidentally, there was a radio ad about stretch ceilings at that time. A very critical element in the hydraulic cylinder is the rear cover. When the press exerts maximum force, it also experiences a force of 500 tons. Therefore, the cover is screwed into the sleeve with a thread 50 millimeters deep and additionally welded with a thick seam both inside and outside. Similarly, using the winch, I assembled the upper support part from steel plates. By the way, the weight of one upper plate is 150 kilograms. The lower plates each weigh 180 kilograms. It remains to secure the cylinder to the upper plates with large bolts and tighten everything well to create a monolithic structure. By the way, to tighten everything properly, it took 10 attempts.
With the help of this wrench, a large nuts on the stands are tightened. To tighten the large lower nuts, the press needs to be jacked up. And for this, a car jack is no longer sufficient, since the assembled press weighs almost 4 tons. The assembly process is complete. All that remains is to fill the system with oil and pump it. By the way, if anyone is interested, the cost of this press was $17,000. Half of this cost is for the hydraulic cylinder. Although, to be honest, at the initial design stage, I estimated the cost to be half as much. The press turned out to be quite compact. Its weight does not exceed 4 tons, and its height is no more than 2 meters. Because it operates at a very high pressure, 450 atmospheres, the pump's performance is not very high, and therefore the piston speed is low. But for our purposes, this is generally suitable. We almost never use the maximum speed on the 100-ton hydraulic press in our experiments. And of course, finally, we need to test the monster we created. Let's try to crush a block of bog oak with it. This is probably one of the hardest types of wood. Maximum pressure at which we press this piece of wood was 200 atmospheres, which corresponds to 250 tons for this press. In general, the maximum working pressure this press can operate at is 450 atmospheres, which corresponds to a force of 500 tons. Now let's crush something more serious than a piece of wood. Previously, we pressed this small Chinese anvil from AliExpress with a 100-ton press. It is clear, of course, that this anvil is not made from the steel of the highest quality. But nevertheless, it is still an anvil. When we tested it with a 100-ton hydraulic press, it began to deform under a load of 50 tons. After the press exerted its maximum force of 100 tons, it looked something like this. Let's see how it will look after a load of 500 tons. 500 tons, after all, is the weight of 10 tanks.
This is how a small Chinese anvil can be turned into a pancake by a 500 ton hydraulic press. I'm kind of curious, can we call this press homemade? After all, I only designed the blueprints and assembled it. Everything else was done at the factory. Suggest in the comments what item would you like to see under this 500 ton monster. At the moment, the press has been painted and looks something like this. Visually, you can assess the size difference of the hydraulic cylinders compared to the 100 ton hydraulic press. Additionally, it operates at twice the pressure of the 100 ton press. The weight of the new cylinder alone is greater than the weight of the entire 100 ton press. I've installed lighting on the nearest two columns. The only thing left is to put up protective screens made of solid polycarbonate. This is because the speed of fragments that could fly out under a 500 ton load is probably going to be high. For clarity, this is what the attachment from the 100 ton press looks like. In this case, I also provided for the installation of attachments from the 100 ton press through a conical adapter. When pressing some strong small objects, something might be missed behind a huge punch attachment. According to calculations, the punch from the 100 ton press should theoretically withstand a 500 ton load, but just barely. However, a punch with a smaller area from the 100-ton press is unlikely to withstand a 500-ton load.